Hello everybody and thank you very much for watching my video. Today I'm going to show you in great detail how it is you can run your dog with your bicycle. Now we've been doing this for three to four years and it's worked out fantastically. Uh, the material here is very affordable, very easy to make and uh, uh, we have a 95 pound husky or husky mix so he still likes to run he's five years old and uh, so he's very strong at pulling now what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna want yourself either a pipe or a PVC pipe which is fine and cut it to the length of the bike rack that you have here you'll also want to get now what's called conduit now conduit is the tubing or piping that you see in a warehouse or even your garage it does not run gas or water it runs uh, the electrical wires that are in there to protect them from being chewed on by like rats and mice and other little animals that like to chew on that stuff so basically you'll want to cut something that's uh, 17, 17 inches long and you'll, you'll want to get yourself one of these I forget what they're called. I wish I knew. I just forgot what they're called. Anyway, you, you can find these these things any hardware store. Very easy. Now, one of the things to do to line them up is if you see my pencil mark, okay, you put this flat on the ground or table, and then you run a pencil mark. That's just to give you a nice and straight lines so that when you drill holes, they're aligned with each other. It's just a little bit of an aid. Now, now, if you've got a drill press, it's much easier to do this, but you do not need a drill press. You can do it with one of these little hand drills, okay? It's easily done. The uh, size of your drill will depend on you. No big deal. And you're going to want to get these wire pins. Again, the thickness of these will depend on how big the holes you make. They do come in different thicknesses, different lengths. This is a three inch. So what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna drill, you wanna draw a line this here as well. And you don't have to do this while it's hooked up to the bicycle. I just already have it there. And of course, it's connected to the bike rack with hose clamps, just two hose clamps. So what you wanna do is you have a line, okay, pencil line. You drill one hole, okay, do not go all the way through. And then on your tubing, you also draw a hole, or you draw a line, I'm sorry, and you drill one hole. Okay, you drill only one hole. Do not go all the way through, okay? Just don't, don't do that. Just go just through one side. Now, once you've done that, you want to insert your tubing and line up the holes. Then you get your wire pin, and you, oh, I'm sorry, not yet. <laughs> I'm jumping the gun. Okay, once you've lined up those two holes, then you drill all the way through, okay? Then you drill all the way through, okay? You take it out, then you put in your wire pin, I've done this already, so it's a little dark here. It's getting dark. Any case, folks. Okay, so you put the pin in, then you put the pin all the way through, then you get your other, then you have another um, uh, a line here again, and you pick a spot and you draw a hole, drill a hole. And you go all the way through. Okay, you go all the way through. And of course, you then get your second pin. Okay, that one fit nice and easy. This one didn't. Anyway, um, I've done this a million times, okay? So now, your tubing here won't come out. Okay, so it's nice and secure. Like I said, always make sure that your bicycle rack is secured to your uh, bicycle. Real nice. Now, when it comes to this strap here or this webbing this is actually one foot long that could slightly change if your dog is a lot smaller or even bigger you can make it and i'm going to show you right now why that's critical so what i have here is belting or webbing that you could find at any hobby store even uh, uh 
some hardware stores will have all this kind of stuff. Like I said, you're going to need a, either an O-ring or a D-ring to put this through here. Okay. Basically something like this. Okay. And you can sew that or you can actually even use rivets. These craft stores tend to sell like these little types of rivets. You can use that stuff too. Uh, sewing it is a little bit easier. You can even hand sew it. A little bit of a pain in the butt. But you'll have both ends of this strap with these rings or D rings, whichever ones you can get. Again, that stuff is easy to find. Um, also, you want to get at least three of these double ended clips. Okay, because one, you're gonna clip onto this side of the of the, uh, the the webbing. You know, you're gonna have one here on the webbing. You're gonna have another one here on the other side of the webbing. Okay, of your webbing strap, and you're gonna need one for your bungee cords. These are two one, uh, one foot bungee cords. And as you can see, all I did was bend the ends. Okay, that's all I did was just clamp them down or just bent them. So um, that way you can take it on and off. You know, just like that. It's off. I got one and I got two. I got two because my dog, like I said, he's 95 pounds. He's a big boy. So this part here is what's going to hook up to your dog's harness, running harness. And make sure that you get a running harness, okay? Not a choker, not a, uh, a collar, an actual running harness. Preferably one with three rings. Two on the side, left and right, and one on top. I always hook him up to the one on his left side. If I run him on, you know, I don't know if you want to run your dog on your other side of the bicycle, um, on your left side, but I run them on my right and so I clip this on to his his left side now This is where it starts to get a little bit critical in the sense of the length or the width how big your dog is If you get a little tiny dog You're probably gonna need more space because he is he or she are gonna be lower to the ground and so this is how he runs now, like I said, in the past three to four years that we've had this, he has never, ever run into my pedals, ever, not one time, okay? And my feet never hit anything back here. It never hits anything, okay? What is important to remember is that when your dog is running and he's pulling you or she's pulling you, that bicycle wheel needs to be in their peripheral vision, from experience, when I've had other ones, that, because obviously I made this one, uh, most of it. When they are running, if they do not see that wheel in their peripheral vision, they are going to cross in front of you. Guaranteed. Okay, I'm speaking from experience. But when I got a shorter bungee cord and he did not go past my wheel, at least he could see me, um, peripheral for my peripheral vision, um, he never got in front of me, not one time. So that is an absolute critical part of the safety when it comes to running your dog. Okay, it doesn't matter if he's on your left, doesn't matter if he's on your right. And so uh, uh, that's the best advice I can give you. Uh, and yeah, this is the bicycle that has the uh, reflective paint on it, so it's still good. Anyway, uh, I hope that uh, you get a chance to run your dog like we do. We love taking them out running. Uh, we go like sometimes like 14 miles. Never have an issue with this system. It's a very, very safe way to get things done for your dog and for you to enjoy a nice long day. And also, <clears throat> he can pull you. <clears throat> yeah, he can pull you. This is better than having him tied up to your handlebars or running in front of you where you can't control him uh, right here. It's a lot easier to control. And like I said, he has never, ever, 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 ever run into my pedals. That's really important. And when the leash is the right size, the right length, everything, he doesn't get in front of me. So I hope this video helps you guys, uh, everyone out there who likes to run your dog. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.